only two ways to know. There's more than one, huh? All right, so I'm gonna try and take that flywheel off. There's an inner bearing, or an outer bearing, and then there's an inner bearing on the other side. Those bearings are bad. It's like grabbing the little axle. See, that's sub-ideal. You can just see how much, actually I don't know if you can see. Well, I'll also have you look here. It's, it moves quite a bit. That's probably like a half inch or something on the, on the outer edge. Um, so before these bearings have a catastrophic failure and this thing just uses all of its rotational energy and destroys the entire world, this thing would probably just roll through the whole complex. Either way, um, Several people, the engineers and other people that work on this, these types of equipment, say the industry standard is to have a press fit on the outside and this will be a loose fit on the inside. So they said this whole thing should just come out easy, but these bearings have been in place for a long time. I tried tapping it off, it does not want to come off it is pretty well stuck so there's these holes these 3 8 holes along on the actual flywheel so I have some 3 8 threaded rod I'm gonna thread it in here and use this ring to have the rods put some washers and nuts and a um, like a, a beam or a bar right here so that it can't go in and then just slowly tighten the four screws, maybe tapping it, tapping it on the back side so that it can come off and hopefully this thing comes off pretty easy. All right, so now I got my rods here. I'm gonna thread them in, and ideally, we'll see how this goes. Alrighty, and then I'll take this guy. Slide him on. I wouldn't do too much of a turn on each one here. No. This will go really quick. Just throwing the wrenches all around. Jeez. As we watch this play out, sped up 4,000%, uh, it actually came off pretty easily once it broke loose on that initial break. It just had to be pulled out about a foot before it was completely free of the shaft. The rear bearing actually stayed in place because the flywheel was so worn out that it wasn't even contacting that rear bearing. So the people that we had pressed the bearings back in, they just had to kind of bore it out, put a sleeve in there, and then they pressed that bearing into that sleeve. But overall, this little uh, puller here worked pretty well. The puller that is kind of designed for this sort of thing was multi-thousands of dollars. And this was just some stuff I had lying around. So that was almost the ideal situation. All right, so kind of cleaned it up. Doesn't look too terrible. So I'm gonna take off those, what is that, six bolts there. And before I do that, I have my tank here, and I'm gonna drain the oil from there, otherwise it's just gonna leak right out that shaft.
And oil still looks great. So these bolts are completely blocked when the flywheel is in place. There is maybe an eighth of an inch gap there. And probably half of these bolts were loose when we took the flywheel off initially. All right, let's finish cleaning this up a little bit better. Uh, here's the part number. Probably can't see that, not that it matters. There you go, look at that, beautiful. Victor 63387. Okay, so my bearings and seals came in. Here's one of the bearings. I went with these Koyo bearings because they were a little bit cheaper than SKF and pretty much a similar quality. I didn't think I needed to go completely high end with the bearings because the equipment's probably not going to get run every day for a long period of time. Uh, I was just recommended by pretty much everyone that these, well, these are made in Japan, but pretty much everyone recommended that if they're made in China, stay away. I was going to show you the, the wear. You can see in this part, that little peak there. That is the actual part that rotates and creates a seal on the inner metal spacer. Here, that peak is completely flat. It's just... It's just gone. No worrying. So I'm going to see if I can just tap this right back into place. There we go. I got a place that's going to got a place that's going to press the bearings back in the flywheel. And this place is called The Works, and they are in Phoenix, Arizona, and they did an excellent job on installing the bearings, and I would definitely recommend them. All right, I apologize for not getting a lot of video here at the end of the reinstall. Uh, we use the same concept as the Polar, except on the end of the shaft, there it was it had a threaded hole so i just threaded a bolt in there welded that horizontal beam and then just had holes drilled in those vertical beams where the nuts were pushed against and that's what was pushing the flywheel into place it worked super well probably just as well as pulling the whole thing off all right so i got the brake press all put back together it is working wonderfully the I did a couple practice bends. You can see here, uh, I just did a nice little offset and it worked out pretty well. Um, that's just a thin, thin sheet of aluminum. It was a lot less difficult than I anticipated to put back together and or take apart. It was just a couple air fittings to take the clutch off uh, and then getting the flywheel off itself was difficult. Uh, but now it runs great, so you can hear it run as compared to before. Um, it, uh, it still needs a soft start, that's why I need to do this. Otherwise it will, uh, yeah, see so it just tripped the breaker. And there you go. So that, that's uh, full speed right there. And I, that just basically sounds like a little bit of a fan going on. Um, if you use the little pedal here, the loudest part is when the clutch actually engages. So 
Just pretty easy. Super happy with the uh, with the outcome of this whole uh, brake press flywheel rebuild. Uh, right now, in the past, you would have to have hearing protection just to have this thing this thing operating. Um, the amperage draw once it's up and running is about three or no, it's about six amps. So if you have any more questions on how we did this or maybe there is something we left out and it might pertain to you if you needed to do a similar project replacing some bearings and a heavier piece of equipment uh, feel free to leave a comment uh, otherwise I hope you enjoyed um, please like and subscribe I guess that's what you're supposed to say on the YouTubes uh, but if you enjoyed it yep thank you for watching Yeah.